In this video, you'll find out about the most exciting astronomical events taking place from June until September of 2023. From the alignment of Mars and Venus to two vibrant meteor showers, get ready to observe fascinating celestial objects like Saturn, which will reach the closest point to Earth in late August. Well, unless it's raining in your region, of course. In any case, dive into the delightful world of stargazing, even if you don't have a telescope. I promise, will be very interesting. Hi there, Mikhail is here. First and foremost, let's talk about the summer solstice, which is the official beginning of astronomical summer. During the summer solstice, the sun reaches the highest position in the sky, so people in the northern hemisphere experience the greatest amount of daylight hours. Therefore, every subsequent period of daylight is shorter, which is always good for astronomers who want to see more celestial objects and cannot do so due to the longevity of the day. The end of the astronomical summer occurs on September 23rd, right on the day of September equinox. There is also the so-called meteorological summer, which spans from June 1st until August 31st. But because this channel is about astronomy and space, in this video I'm covering the astronomical summer. The astronomical summer is basically determined on the tilt of our planet relative to the sun. The same day of June 21st will bring a fascinating conjunction of our natural satellite and two planets, Venus and Mars. Throughout the entire beginning of summer, both planets will be located fairly close to each other, and Venus will be visible until the end of July. Uh, thankfully, uh, finding both planets is not a very hard task, and even if you live in a light polluted city, you can easily see Mars and Venus shining brightly in the western part of the sky, probably like an hour after sunset. To locate Mars, begin by identifying Venus, which is an extremely easy object to spot. All you need to do is look west probably an hour after sunset and then find the brightest star that you will see above the horizon. Once you have successfully located Venus, you can then find Mars positioned slightly higher above it. Through small and medium-sized telescopes, Mars will look like a little red dot, since it happens to be located very very far away from Earth in the summer of 2023. Once again, if you happen to have a small telescope, point it toward Venus which will kind of resemble our natural satellite, as its surface will be only partially illuminated by the sun. Venus looks this way because it's an inferior planet, which means that it's closer to the sun than Earth is. If you look at Venus from our planet through a telescope, you'll see how it gradually goes through a, uh, through a series of phases as it orbits the sun. That's what Venus will look like on June 21st, and here is September 23rd. Pretty impressive, isn't it? On July 3rd, you will witness the full moon with two notable characteristics. On July 3rd, you will witness the full moon with two notable characteristics. First, it will be the supermoon, which means that it will be larger and brighter than the majority of other full moons throughout the year. Although the naked eye may not easily discern it, it will appear approximately 7% larger than a normal full moon. Second, it will be called the Buck Moon. Basically, it's one of the many nicknames given to the full moon in July, and this specific nickname is given to the full moon because new anthers grow rapidly on the buck foreheads in this month. Additionally, the July full moon is known by other names, including Thunder Moon, Salmon Moon, and Raspberry Moon. Now it's time to talk a little bit about meteor showers, because everyone loves observing them, unless you live somewhere here. Delta Aquarius meteor shower will peak on July 30th, producing between 15 to 20 meteors during the peak. Uh, on any other day but the peak day, the meteor shower will produce no more than 20 meteors hourly. Also, here comes another difficulty, the moon. Meteors are dim and can be easily overshadowed by both light pollution and the radiance of the moon. Given the fact that the moon will be bright and positioned high in the sky during the peak of the celestial event, it would probably be better for you to wait for the next meteor shower. Yes, and the next shower is called the Perseids. This is one of the brightest meteor showers visible throughout the year, which is active from late July to late August. 
This year, it will peak around August 11 and 12, with producing up to 100 meteors per hour. Now, guess what? During this meteor shower peak, the full moon will be located below the horizon, and when it finally rises above it, it will be only slightly illuminated by the sun. Therefore, this year presents the best opportunity to go outside of a light polluted city and observe the Perseids. As an example, during my last observation of the shower in a light polluted town, I witnessed 5 meteors in around 40 minutes. However, it's always better to stay outside of bustling city centers covered by bright street lights and other sources of pollution. Instead, seek out a dark area in your neighborhood, probably like a park where light pollution is not that bad. Now, let's talk about the occultation of Antares. An occultation takes place when one celestial body passes in front of another. August 24th will mark such an occurrence when the moon passes in front of the brightest star in the constellation Scorpius. The precise timing of the event will vary depending on your location, but it's expected to start at some point after midnight. Now, what's cool is that Antares is visible without a telescope, so you'll be able to see this magnificent event with the naked eye. However, the occultation will be visible only in Canada, the United States, and Mexico. To determine the approximate area where the coverage will be visible, refer to this amazing map that I created in Paint, or simply download a free sky map called Stellarium. Link in the description. Saturn, the sixth planet from the Sun, and one of the most beautiful celestial objects, will reach its opposition on August 27th. The opposition will happen when Saturn, Earth, and the Sun align in a straight line. During the opposition, Saturn is at its closest point to Earth, making it look brighter and bigger through a telescope. Therefore, the final days of August and the first days of September will mark the best time to observe the ringed planet. It will be easily visible to the naked eye, appearing as a yellowish star in the southeastern part of the sky after sunset. Even by utilizing small telescopes, you'll see its magnificent rings, potentially the Cassini division that separates rings A and B, and probably its largest moon called Titan. The end of August will be marked by the full moon, which also happens to be called the blue moon. No, 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 don't get me wrong. The term blue moon doesn't have to do anything with the color of the full moon. This term is basically used to mark the third full moon in a season that contains four full moons instead of the three ones. Some sources also state that the blue moon is the second full moon that occurs within a calendar month. In any case, all you need to know is that the moon won't turn blue. It's still exciting, of course. The upcoming full moon will be also classified as the supermoon because it will be located closer to our planet than usually. Nevertheless, it's really hard to notice the difference in size and brightness compared to the regular full moons. In September, there will be three noteworthy astronomical events, starting with Neptune reaching opposition on September 19th. Just like in the case with Saturn, an opposition will occur when Neptune is positioned across the sky from the Sun as observed from Earth. During the opposition, the eighth planet from the Sun will be located at its closest point to Earth throughout the year, therefore making it look bigger and brighter through telescopes. Therefore, this period of the year will mark the best time to observe Neptune. Viewing Neptune requires the use of a telescope, because even at its closest approach to Earth, it appears as a dim dot, situated roughly 4.3 billion kilometers away from us. Nevertheless, successfully locating Neptune is a remarkable accomplishment, because it's both the faintest and the farthest planet from Earth. In the early morning of September 22nd, Mercury will reach its greatest elongation, thus being located high in the sky before sunrise and making it easier to find it. Despite being a fairly bright planet, Mercury is quite hard to locate in the morning sky because it usually gets lost in the glare of the sun. Therefore, the higher it rises above the horizon, the easier it is to find it. To locate the planet, look towards the eastern horizon approximately an hour and a half before sunrise. Observing Mercury is always easier if you utilize a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. When observed through an optical instrument, Mercury will show phases similar to our Moon, because just like Venus, it undergoes phase changes while orbiting the Sun. 
The final event, called September Equinox, will occur on September 23rd, which will mark the end of the astronomical summer in the Northern Hemisphere. On the day of September Equinox, the duration of daylight and darkness is almost equal. Therefore, every subsequent duration of daylight is shorter and people in the Northern Hemisphere start experiencing even colder days. Thus, September Equinox marks the beginning of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, while people in the Southern Hemisphere experience the start of spring, with longer and warmer days. Some people may say that I am solely discussing the summer of the Northern Hemisphere, while people in the Southern Hemisphere experience winter at the same time. Therefore, it is important to mention that most of the events that I mention in this video, they are also visible in the Southern Hemisphere. Additionally, I plan to create a video highlighting the most captivating astronomical events of winter 2023-2024, which will coincide with summer in the Southern Hemisphere. In any case, I hope that this video was useful for you, and if you want to see more content on astronomy and space exploration, please consider subscribing. And as always, thank you for watching very interesting videos. Bye.